December 16th, 2022. Uh, you can see I'm uh, on the road again with the old 7.3, and uh, I'm headed down to Jersey, I'm headed back home to visit my parents for the weekend, and uh, this is going to be a bit of a special weekend because for the first time in its life, basically, for the first time in nearly 70 years, my late grandfather's John Deere 60 tractor that he farmed with is going to be leaving the state of New Jersey. So, as a refresher, my grandfather bought the tractor when it was two years old from the local dealership. It was a demonstrator. And uh, originally, the tractor was shipped to the Baltimore uh, research branch or distribution branch of John Deere, where it was, I guess at that point, sent to you know a bunch of local dealerships to be used as a demonstrator. It ended up at our local dealer, Fish and Foster in uh, Sweetsboro, New Jersey, where my grandfather bought it two years later. And... Uh, it lived on the family farm pretty much its entire life until about 2002 when my grandfather was getting ready to sell out and uh, he was selling off a lot of his equipment. He towed the tractor to my uncle's farm just around the corner and it sat there for you know 20 ish years. And then uh, this weekend I'm finally going to be loading it up and bringing it up to my place here in Pennsylvania where it'll slowly but surely get restored back to its former glory. It's been many years in the making and. Uh, Unfortunately, due to you know life circumstances, I haven't really had a good good chance to get it inside and get it you know you know start working on it. Um, at least it's not as quick as I would like to. So I figure you know what I mentioned in my first video I made this year that one of my goals for 2022 was to get the 60 in my shop by the end of the year, and we're getting close to the end of the year. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet, or you guys would have seen a video on it already. But uh, I put my mind to it, and I'm going to make it happen. Now, it's probably just going to sit in there for a little while until I actually have a few minutes to really start tinkering with it or at least get some parts taken off of it and sandblasted, but hey, you know what? At least it'll be inside. Come to think of it, that'll be the first time the tractor's ever lived inside. Um, the only times I can think that that tractor would have ever spent a night inside were when it was getting repaired at the dealership. So, this tractor will be given a new life, and uh, I'm proud to be able to get started on it finally. We're going to go into 2023 with a great project lined up. So, I'm headed down to Jersey right now. Like I said, it's getting pretty late here Friday night, but uh, when I come back up at the end of this weekend, I'll have the 60 in tow. So, we'll get her loaded up and bring her on to her new home. This is the sight that every restorer wants to see when they first tear into a machine. Definitely cause for concern, but at the same time it's not too surprising. <laughs> I mean, this tractor sat outside literally its entire life and spent the last 35, 36 years sitting, you know, rusting away, so... Well, after about five minutes of letting water drain out of it, it would appear that we have struck an artery. With the price of diesel these days, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> putting this stuff in my truck or in my furnace at home doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Yeah, so as expected, we've got water coming out of pretty much every single orifice. Um, ironically, except for the uh, water or coolant drain, that's pretty dry, but I'm pretty sure all the water or coolant that was in this tractor evaporated years ago. So that means we have a cooling system full of rust, which doesn't really surprise me. But had a couple gallons of water come out of the oil drain, a couple more gallons of water out of the transmission, and... I'd say probably half a gallon or so out of the 
PTO gearbox, which is absolutely insane considering that I don't really think it holds that much to begin with. So, uh, needless to say, <laughs> we got a bit of a project on our hands. So, you can see I have all the drain plugs out. And I still need to drop the uh, oil filter yet. I haven't done that yet. I'm curious to see what will come out when I pull that. But I'm going to let this sit here and drain overnight and maybe flush it out again before we load it up. Uh, I don't want to create a biohazard if I did this at my own place because my landlord would probably kill me. So just trying to drain it out, make it a little bit lighter. And uh, that way when I get it up to my place and we get it inside, I can tear it apart and not have to worry about anything spilling out of it. So... That's kind of where we stand for now. Stay tuned for tomorrow when we uh, get it, you know, somewhat buttoned back up and uh, get it loaded on the trailer. All right, so what we're planning to do is pull the tractor out into the open here and then get both floater tractors and lift up both sides of the 60 and then back my trailer under it. So. If these two loader tractors will do it, I'll be impressed. I guess we're gonna find out. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so we got her all loaded up, and we're going to be heading out here. So this will be the first time the tractor has been off the uh, the old homestead in pretty much its entire life. <laughs> the old fields this thing used to farm. So I stopped at my parents' house for a little bit and uh, got some pictures and whatnot. Heading up to Pennsylvania now, so this will be the first time this tractor has been out of the state of New Jersey its whole life. This bridge hadn't even been built when this tractor was brought into New Jersey the first time. 